Bishop Darren A. Ferguson. I am the pastor of Mount Carmel Baptist Church in Far Rockaway, New York. My name is Dr. Yvonne M. Bennett. My role at the church, um, my husband and I pastor Hallelujah Christian Fellowship Ministries. My name is Q English. My title is Reverend. I pastor the Bronx Christian Fellowship Church along with my husband, Pastor Tim English. I'm Derek Harkins and I am the Senior Vice President for Innovations in Public Programming. My name is Kip Bernard Banks, Sr. I serve as the Senior Pastor of the East Washington Heights Baptist Church located in Southeast Washington, D.C. Um, I'm Reverend Tony Lee, the um, Pastor of Community of Hope AME Church. My name is Reverend W. Anthony Sinkfield. I am the pastor of Payne Chapel AME Church in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Christy Sinkfield, First Lady of Payne Chapel AME Church in Nashville, Tennessee, the wife of Pastor Sinkfield. When I first got to Mount Carmel, maybe eight years ago when I first became pastor, there was a young lady there who was about 16 and she was pregnant. And she came to church one Sunday and she said to me before service, she said, I really don't want to be here. And I said, why? She said, because I'm 16 and I'm pregnant and I want people looking at me funny. In some houses of worship, in the house of worship I grew up in a long time ago, if a girl got pregnant, she was excommunicated from the church. And the man and the boy could stay there while he got other, other girls pregnant. And, and from there, some of those same children, they got pregnant again and or became drug addicted, rebellious. Why? Because they didn't never sense that we cared for them. Unfortunately for the church, sex, sex is a taboo topic. Uh, and it, it, it just goes with, with, with the tradition, certain things you don't discuss in church. Uh, however, it's everywhere in society. Well, I think the church needs to deal with the issues of the day and the issues that impact people. And so I, I don't think there's anything uh, that people are dealing with that the church should shy away from, but the church should be a place where people can come, not just for the answers to their problems, but to be able to talk through the challenges of their lives. You need to deal with the, um, the beginning, what, what, what's, what, what's going on, what's leading this child into this. So then if young ladies make a mistake, young men make a mistake, it's not a death sentence, it's not the end of life, and the church that's supposed to be the family of God and embrace you and love you and lift you is there to help you to redirect, to find ways and means to make better choices or different choices and to enjoy the abundance that God has for us. As I think about what First Ladies in particular and churches in general can do to impact the lives of young people as they're navigating this really complex world of relationships and sexuality, I think the best thing we can do is to be, is to love them, love on folks, love on these young people, and let them know it's just okay. It's hard, and it's sometimes, and sometimes it's easy, but it's, I think when our kids come to church, they just want somebody to love them and to care about them. And out of that love and care emerges conversations, things that are important to them. When people understand that you genuinely care about